hey guys and welcome back to my channel love charms world thank you guys so much for coming back to my channel and thank you for tuning in to last week's video if you haven't tuned into last week's video you might want to go ahead and watch that one before you watch this one i'm gonna wait a second did you watch it how was it comment down below okay so let's jump right into this week's video and let's get right into it okay guys so this week we're gonna be speaking about my pregnancy journey now as i've said in the previous video uh, this pregnancy was the worst to me it's my first pregnancy and um yeah it wasn't i thought it would have been one of those easygoing pregnancies where you know the women are like flourishing and doing all these stuff and doing photo shoots going here and there doing what you know just doing their regular life stuff for me it did not go that way so let's fast forward a little bit so i found out i was pregnant in july yeah this month july <laughs> so i found out i was pregnant in july at the beginning everything was going smooth and everything i was cool you know having little cravings here and there and then um um, I took the test and I found out I was pregnant. Anyways, um, fast forward to my first um, my first visit. Um, everything was good, baby was good, everything was good in the first visit. And then um, that was to confirm that I was pregnant and everything and the steps I needed to take and all of that good stuff. Um, so after that, uh, I remember I took a t trip to Jamaica and during my trip in jamaica i was throwing up a little but i wasn't paying too much attention to it because i'm like you know i've read and i've seen that's like a symptom for most women who is pregnant so i was like okay cool so i came back from jamaica and then my doctor was like you gained a lot of weight <laughs> i gained a lot of weight because i was eating in jamaica and I kind of felt bad. So I remember I left my doctor's visit and me and my husband, we went um, to this Jamaican restaurant and we bought fried dumpling and stewed chicken and everything, right? Cause that's what I felt for, right? Went home, ate it. As soon as I finished, I threw back up every single thing I ate. And from that day on, until the end of my pregnancy, I threw up every single day, everything I ate. Every single thing I ate. Every single thing I ate. Um, it was one of the most depressing time of my life. Um, I remember going back and forth with my doctor and she was like she wasn't understanding what it was but funny enough prior to that I was following this girl on Instagram and she was talking about hyperemesis and um, I was like reading up about it and everything and I was like oh this sounds serious and lo and behold it happens to me so um, I'll screenshot um, the meaning of um, hyperemesis gravidarium. Um, I don't even know how to pronounce it properly, but I'll screenshot the meaning of it. So basically, you throw up, you have weight loss, like you just, it was just, it was crazy. I lost a lot of weight. I gained back a few, I gained back some weight, but I did during my pregnancy, I lost a lot of weight, like a lot of weight. Um, so, I was going back and forth. I went to the hospital like seven times. And the first time I went to the doctor, um, the hospital, the emergency room, I was, um, they had to give me um, IV liquid because I was um, dehydrated. Um, 
and also something about some salt I don't remember the correct terminology but I needed salt in my system and they had to give me this big pill it was so huge and it tasted disgusting they had to break it in half though and um, gave it to me and then being that my GYN was linked to the hospital in which I delivered I was able she was able to see what they gave me my chart and um, she prescribed Zofrin for me however Zofrin does not work for everybody it didn't work for me at all for some reason the dosage that they gave me in the hospital was working but when they gave me the pill it did not work the Zofrin and the IV worked better than me taking it mouth through mouth they gave me a lot of other medication but to be honest guys, I do not remember the name of the medications that they gave me, but I do know Zofrin was one of them that I had to take. And also there was this other one that I take, it was kind of sweet, that kind of helped me to not throw up. I had to take it, some of them I had to take every three hours, some I had to take every six. I had to be, I had to have a schedule um, with it. Um, the first time my doctor prescribed something for me, it did not work for me and I was, it was making it worse. But guys, hyperemesis is not a joke. Like I went through it. Um, I felt so depressed. One, at one point I, for a long time, I couldn't even drink water. Like, and this, I was so worried about my baby um, not gaining the proper weight. That's one of the reasons why I had to deliver early because my baby wasn't gaining the weight that she should have been gaining. When I had my baby, my baby was four pound 11 ounces and she can't, they had to induce me early. And I do believe that's one of the reasons why my baby didn't gain the weight that she was supposed to get because I could not eat anything. Like everything that I ate, even I tried fruits and here and there I was having cravings, not as much. Um, when I do have cravings and I was eating, um, I was throwing it back up. It was, it was just not staying down. Um, but one thing that did help that I do recommend is um, uh, Gatorade or, but the Gatorade that worked for me is the one that was zero. The one that says zero because one that, um, the regular one that's not zero did not work for me, but the one that was zero because of less sugar and everything, um, it worked, it helped me out um, a lot. Like, and yeah. I was in the hospital, I went to the hospital like seven times. The first time I went, I spent one night. The second time I spent, each time I go, I spent more time. The longest I've spent in the hospital was 20 days I spent into the hospital. And I feel like the reason why I gained back my weight is the, the fluids that they had to put back into my body because I was losing so much. And at one point, um, I do not remember the terminologies, but I know my enzymes weren't, they weren't leveled. It was, I think, I know it wasn't leveled and it was really, really bad. So I had to stay in the hospital for, um, for almost two weeks the last time. The last time, um, almost two weeks I spent, I believe. And then the, the last time I went to the hospital, I spent 20 days. Um, I spent my birthday in the hospital. And it was, I spent 20 days in the hospital. They had to give me fluids. And also another thing, I they were watching me for preeclampsia because they noticed um, something, I think with the enzymes and they just had to, and my blood pressure, my blood pressure was really, really high. So, that was that's that was another reason why they had to induce me so after my pregnancy they um they had to watch me make sure that my blood pressure was at a decent level because um pre cancer is another bad one some women after they deliver they have to be in the hospital but to get their blood pressure down because it could kill them like i was it was 
so stressing. I was crying because imagine I am a person that loves to drink water and imagine not being able to have something you love. <laughs> I couldn't eat. I couldn't drink anything. I was just, I was, I was so, I was extremely weak. I couldn't even bend down to tie my shoes lace. I couldn't, I couldn't take proper, like it, it took a lot of, of me to get out of bed to take a shower. That's how bad it was. Like, like I had to pep myself like, okay, well, I'm going to get up now and I'm going to take a shower. Like it took a toll on my body guys. And I was crying because, um, I couldn't even do stuff for myself. Like, thank God for my, um, my family, my husband for being there because I don't know if I could have done this alone. Like, I was crying to my mom so much. Like, I can't wait for this to end. And, you know, I got, it's during a pandemic and in the hospital, they weren't, um, letting in people. I remember the hospital, the hospital. And another thing, guys, make sure if you're going to get pregnant, make sure your insurance is up because being that I couldn't work, um, being that I couldn't work for so long and I was up for so long, my company actually dropped me from their insurance. They did suggest another insurance, but that insurance was so high. So I couldn't even get to go to my OBGYN anymore because she didn't take, um, she only took private insurance. She didn't take the state insurance. So, I had to get a different insurance um, and the insurance that I got the the hospital that I was supposed to be that I was supposed to deliver at they dropped that insurance so I had to call back to get a different insurance and it was like a lot like and I had to find luckily the the um, the place that I was supposed to that I delivered luckily they had a clinic and I was able to finish my um, my checkups there. Like, thank God for that because I was it was it was so much going on, guys. Like, you have to make sure you you have these stuff up and up. But my pregnancy was not easy. No, I don't. I barely have any pictures of me pregnant. I barely have any pictures. I was supposed to do a photo shoot. I couldn't. I. I had zero energy um, about to I had zero energy to do anything anything I couldn't see my family for a while my family had to come and visit my family had to come and cook my family had to drop dinner off like it was crazy it was crazy and on top of that I would have little cravings here and there and my husband had to run out and get stuff like it was it was not a good pregnancy it was not a good pregnancy and I was crying to my mom every day and I said I can't like I really felt like giving up I felt like giving up and um, but I still kept the faith I still ride it out and I'm so so grateful that my daughter is here now I love her so much my little baby um, but for those of you who have not heard about hyperemesis I do recommend you go and do your research about hyperemesis because trust me, um, it is not easy. And for women out there who are going through this, I do recommend you get help. Like you, you, you need help and try to stay positive. I had to stay positive. I have to think positive, especially as I was saying is I was, um, this, all was happening during a pandemic so I wasn't able to go to the hospital that I delivered for a while because of the insurance that I had at the time so I had to stay with that insurance for three months or something like that and then switch over or I had to wait until January to switch over so thank God I was able to do that and they had to transfer me to a different hospital um, to finish my to finish my care for the time being and that hospital it wasn't taking any um visits because of the pandemic and i was in the hospital by myself um 
cry like I felt like I was crying some days but I was on the verge of depression and every time I felt like I was falling into depression I try to think of something positive let me tell you 20 days in a hospital and plus the hospital that they transferred me to they don't have single rooms for people um, so I had to share so luckily I had to tell the nurse like I had to beg the nurse that I have the room to myself thank God for those for those nurses and thank God for the nurses that did sneak my mom and my grandma in for my birthday to see me like I'm I was so grateful for that and they even brought me cupcakes and stuff for my birthday and gave me a card and it was really beautiful and sweet but I didn't want to deliver there because I didn't feel comfortable that's another story okay because the, <laughs> apparently they wasn't supposed to keep me in the hospital for that long but nonetheless um i was able to transfer back to the hospital because i got my other insurance approved i was able to transfer back to the hospital then we should where i wanted to have my daughter and luckily i had it her there because my husband was able to be there and to stay there with me during the time because the other hospital they weren't once as you delivered dad saw the baby that's it they can't stay over and to me I feel like that's the moment you need your partner to be there to bond and everything <sighs> I know this is off topic but please like research about hyperemesis guys it is it's not easy I went through it and I lost weight I couldn't eat I couldn't drink sometime the medication that they gave me I was on a lot of medication and it didn't help it it made sense to just stay in the hospital for the time being to get the the, the medication and stuff that you needed through IV because I felt like that worked way better than them sending me home however had I have my private insurance I could have had um, a nurse come to my house and gave me the fluids through IV and I could have been home on bed rest and stuff like that but I'm not sure with the state I'm pretty sure I think with the state you could do that but I'm not really sure but I know with the private insurance you could because that was one thing that my um, my GYN was gonna put me on for someone to come over and give me the IV but unfortunately my insurance got cut off in the process but I'm really grateful that for the state insurance that I was able to deliver the baby my baby where I wanted to and everything worked out when it came to me having to go back to the hospital and stay there um but um as I said what helped me during that time my family my friends who were there for me um i just want to thank them my husband and everything i just want to thank them so much for for that time because it wasn't easy for me mentally i it it was bad for me mentally physically emotionally everything it was really really bad health wise um i don't even guys you know money iv i had taken there are still like marks in my skin the amount of time sometimes they couldn't even find my vein because my it's like my body was so weak and they even the hospital that they transferred me when I didn't have my insurance they stick me wrong and it was like a whole it's a whole nother thing but I'm really grateful um, as I said, what helped me during that time, in the end, um, this doctor, she told me about um, taking the Gatorade. And I did see it on YouTube as well when I came on here to look. Um, they did suggest a Gatorade. But what worked for me is the one, the Gatorade that's marked zero. That one helped because it's no sugar and it's just, you know, plain. That one helped me out a lot. Um, it didn't trigger um, anything. It didn't trigger my hyperemesis so yeah that's the story of my pregnancy and why I couldn't work I could not work with that because I was throwing up every single day ten times a day it's like non-stop it's I was throwing up more than ten times a day non-stop back to back to back to back to back to back throwing up 
throwing up. I was throwing up blood. Yes, I was throwing up blood because um because I've been throwing up so much. So when that happens, I go to the doctor, get the IV and everything. So I don't want this video to be any longer than it is. That's just like what I went through during my pregnancy. If you guys want to know more, just let me know in the comment section. I'll be sure to tell you guys more about my pregnancy with the insurance and everything that happened to me. Um, if you guys like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you so much. And uh, I see you in my next video. Have a great day. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.